Well, let's talk about some of the reaction over the weekend. I tried to come up with a, a very incomplete list of the absolute worst takes. Um, before we get to those, though, um, Michael McCall is the chairman of the House Armed Services Committee. Am I correct about that? Uh, right. The, 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 sorry, House Foreign Affairs. I'm sorry, the House Foreign Affairs Committee. And uh, he was on one of the Sunday shows yesterday. He, this is not one of the worst takes yet. Uh, but, but describing what we know about what happened. We do know that Iran is behind this. They have financed this every step of the way, and they've trained uh, these terrorists. Uh, this must have been planned for months to strike on the 50th anniversary of Yom Kippur, uh, you know, the war in 1973. Um, and, um, and that's uh, very evident. I'm also concerned about the $6 billion in lifted sanctions that have now gone into Iran. I don't think it uh, played a part in this. Mm. Uh, event, but it certainly could play a part in any future uh, terror activities. Yeah, I don't know where the money is, uh, Will, but I, I would think you might want to put a stop on that check. <laughs> I just, that's, <laughs> well, that's just my thought. It's not yeah. not a check. It's Iran's <laughs> right. money. Just so everybody knows, yeah. like it was moved from like from South Korea to Qatar, I think. I forget. Anyway, it's moved yeah. from one account to another, and yeah. it was sanctions money. It wasn't our money. It wasn't okay. yeah. taxpayers' money, right? If, if, if there's any way not, not to get that back in their hands, it would be good. Well, of course, uh, speaking of the worst takes, um, uh, Republicans almost to a person are citing all of this. And, of course, Donald Trump, the former president of the United States, had this to say over the weekend. Here's a little compilation of some of the things, some of his comments. The war happened for two reasons. The United States is giving and gave to Iran Powerful. six billion dollars, six billion over over hostages, over hostages. And what's going on with Israel right now? People were shocked. I wasn't shocked because two weeks ago we gave six billion dollars. He wasn't shocked. <laughs> God, this is. Fuck that guy. So, but I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah. But again, the, the six billion, we're going to hear that six billion dollars um, every hour, every minute of every day for the next several months, I'm guessing. We are. OK, can we, I just want to pause on Trump for a minute there. So you and I, Charlie, we, we exhale uh, carbon dioxide, right? Donald Trump exhales lies. And this is a really spectacular one, right? He says two weeks ago. It's actually like four weeks ago. Yeah. We we transferred this six billion. He he lies about what it is, but he's so that's two weeks, four weeks ago, right? Meanwhile, McCall is saying obviously this is plan. This was planned for months, right? right. Because it was planned for this fiftieth anniversary. So and the operation, uh, the the logistics that went into this with getting the rockets together and everything yeah. took a long time. So Donald Trump is lying. He's lying because all he cares about is attributing to Joe Biden and to this Iranian transfer of you know, transfer of Iran's money, the, the, the reason for this attack. The attack was going to happen anyway. It doesn't actually bear any, there's no causal connection. It just looks bad. Yeah. Okay. Um, among other really, really bad takes, and we can just sort of run through this, uh, Elon Musk actually linked to an account on, on, on X that refers to Israel as the Zionist regime, the Jewish terror state. He since deleted that. Uh, uh, Musk recommended uh, this, uh, this information uh, he said, you know, go, go to, you know, this site for information on the Israeli um, uh, uh, attack. It's an anti-Semitic account with a history of spreading disinformation. Wonderful. You know, e e Elon Musk continues to, I don't, we, I don't want to spend time on him. Don Jr., uh, this is one of my favorite tweets. Don Jr. Uh, used the, the incident to display his own uh, inveterate ignorance once again. He actually put out, how is it possible that I've seen more videos out of the sworn Israel in a few hours than I've seen in Ukraine in almost two years? I don't know, maybe because you've had your head up your ass for two years, <laughs> because you've been too busy kissing Vladimir Putin's butt to notice what's going on in Ukraine. Um, I, I, I regret to tell you that Lawrence Tribe, a progressive law professor from Harvard, who we have quoted many times, uh, also, in a since deleted post, um, put out is Netanyahu wagging the dog of war to get attention away from his own war in the independent judiciary? Um, JD Vance, of course, um, blames America first. By the way, this is a new thing among Republicans blaming America first. We did it, we paid for it. Uh, JD Vance says, as we watch this horrible situation in Israel unfold, Americans must face a stark truth. Our tax dollars funded this. Uh, bullshit. Um, the Democratic Socialists of America. Have you followed this one? Uh, oh, God. They, 
they're they're having a rally in support of Palestine. And this uh, Democratic uh, congressman named Richie Torres um, really went on a torrent this weekend attacking the Democratic Socialists and his colleagues from the squad for attacking Israel or blaming Israel. I, I don't know what Richie Torres' story is, but but he is really outspoken. He said, the New York City Department uh, DSA, uh, Democratic Socialists of America, is planning to hold a rally tomorrow glorifying the terrorism of Hamas as resistance. And then he just, you know, walks through how how awful that is. So I, the, the there, there, just a reminder, there is a an element of the left that has been um, consistently anti-Israel and will blame Israel for anything. Yeah. So I, I, let me pull back from whether this is right or yeah. left and just draw a, a general argument. Yeah. There are, what, what happens in politics is we tend to sort of find people who agree with us and then we form like-minded silos, right? And we right. have Trials. our issues. There's yeah. your issues and there's our issues. Yeah. Like yeah. Ukraine, if you're on the right now, Ukraine is your issue, you lefties, right? Yeah. But Israel is our issue, right? right. So right. don't care about Ukraine, do care about Israel or um, the, I care about the Palestinian cause. And so even on a day when a bunch of Hamas terrorists went and murdered a bunch of Jews, I'm going to like talk about Palestinian rights. Read the room, read the situation. Okay. Like, and just to turn things around for a little bit, about 30 years ago, uh, a Jewish settler went in and murdered like 30, uh, uh, Arabs in, uh, 30 Muslims who were like praying in Israel. Right. That would have been a really bad day for me to talk about, you know, the importance of defending Israel against extremists. Right. So, folks, I I appreciate all the concern about about Palestinian causes. Today is not the day for for, for that. Um, It's going to be really bad in the next couple of weeks as Israel goes into Gaza. And and by the way, Charlie, this applies to us, too. Right. For those people who believe in Israel's right to defend itself and who recognize the threats to Israel. Uh, we mustn't lose our souls and we mustn't lose our perspective. And just because it is true that Hamas uses human shields does not mean that Israel should go right. into Gaza with no regard for yeah. civilian casualties right. as a result of its operations. Okay, here's a strange one. Here's a strange reaction. Um, and I'm, I'm, again, as usual, I'm anxious to get your, your take on all of this. Mike Pence who, um, in case you forgot, is actually still in the race for, for president, uh, Donald Trump's former vice president. Remember, remember him? Remember Mike Pence? Who, who occasionally says, like, things that you go, hey, that's, that's, that's wonderful. Well, he, uh, he had this to say, kind of, it's very interesting. He had this to say in reaction to uh, the attack on Israel this week. And listen to this. I also believe this is what happens when we have leading voices like Donald Trump, Vivek Ramswamy, and Ron DeSantis signaling retreat from America's role as leader of the free world. Ooh, I really want to agree and applaud that. I really, I, I, all of my instincts, I have to say, I mean, they're all up there going, but then I go, wait, wait, wait. If we accept the argument that, that none of this you know, that this has been planned for a long time and it's hard to get in Hamas. I don't think that Hamas launched this because of anything that Ron DeSantis or Vivek Ramaswamy has been doing. I would be more than willing to blame this on Donald Trump, but but I I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not totally seeing this. And I thought it was interesting that Mike Pence, who's basically been handed this high lob to do what he does so well, which is just attack Democrats, that he decided to turn this on his fellow Republicans. I mean, I'm just uh, the whole thing was was puzzling me. What did you think, Will? So can I can I applaud Mike Pence here? Okay. I, I mean, I've been enjoying Mike Pence ever since uh, about a month, uh, several weeks ago. He gave a speech about populism versus conservatism. It I mean, was great. He's wonderful he's, speech. Yeah, Pence has been in the process. I know everybody. There are a lot of bulwark readers mm-hmm. and listeners who like despise Mike Pence. He stood next mm-hmm. to Donald Trump. It's all true, but. Recently, Mike Pence has been on a start to express the truth tour. Yeah. And and so he's been acknowledging a lot of the stuff. He's right. But he had to take the- a part. OK, but he had to take a partisan political shot. I, I guess I'm trying to have a have some something of a consistent standard here yeah. is that if your first reaction is to say, how can I score a political opponent against somebody that I'm running against? It's like a little cringy. Right. Well, he's right, though. He's right that there these uh, are voices of appeasement. Hey, Charlie, you and I were just discussing Ukraine, Israel, and well, okay. the Republicans have decided we don't care about Ukraine, but we do care about Israel. No, Pence is saying, I'm consistent. You may disagree with me. I may be wrong, but I am a consistent you know, hawk 
I'm, I believe in a strong American foreign policy and a strong American involvement in Israel and in Ukraine. And, and, and these guys like J.D. Vance can't talk soft about Ukraine and then suddenly pose as hawks. Okay, now, 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 now that, that's going to be very interesting because the whole, you know, J.D. Vance line is that any money you spend on any country fighting for its own freedom is somehow uh, coming out of American taxpayers' pockets and is bad right. for America, right? That's the whole America, America first. So you're right. At some point, I think we do have to have a vigorous discussion about you cannot say that it is wrong for us to support Ukraine and then pivot and say that we are a reliable ally of Israel that if you have basically signaled we're withdrawing from the world and we will let you know the big fish swallow the small fish because it's not our problem then what are, what message are you sending to Israel and any right. other country that might fight for it so i agree with that i just uh i just, mike i'm trying to figure out mike pence's psychology so, i mean sometimes he is like, it's like Mike Pence woke up. He says, I'm going to run for president. I'm going to stand for these values. And then the next day, of course, it'll be something different. But OK. Well, some OK. But sometimes deeply flawed people make deeply true arguments. Mm. Right. And that's just the way it's it is. True. Right. So just because we don't like Mike Pence and because Mike Pence was okay. a weasel for All four right. or five years. Right. So he's expressing Reagan conservatism. That, that is a you know legit point of view that, right. that that ought to be heard here. Can I just. Can I say one more thing here to undercut all of this causal analysis? Because I think it's all bullshit. I just think Hamas was going to do this anyway because yeah, right. they wanted to undermine peace, right? right. Um, all the, the complaints that any kind of softness in the United States, Joe Biden, you know, uh, with the money to Iran or, or, you know, appeasement among the Republican elite, right, affected what happened here in Israel – they ignored the obvious truth that Israelis themselves elected a parliament that installed a right-wing Likud government. The government of Israel is a right-wing hawkish government. Don't tell me that Hamas looked at what was going on in the United States and said, you know, oh, you know, that they're, they're soft, so we're going to attack Israel, when Israel itself was, was electing a hawkish government. Hawkishness failed here. It failed. 